Hey there, if you click this video, you're probably interested in making a tablet interface for your vehicle. Uh, these interfaces are usually called head units if just to help you search for other options. Uh, I decided to make a video on how to set up the Nexus 7 because on Reddit, there is a pretty well-known um, kernel called Tim Mertz kernel that works with the Nexus 7. And Nexus 7 is a pretty good size to fit in a double DIN um, slot on your dashboard. So I was playing around with some settings and my, uh, my tablet recently froze and is stuck in the soft boot. So I decided to make a video that explains how to go through this process because I've already done it a few times. And I thought that showing people how it's done can make it easier for them because it took me a while to remember how to do everything. Okay, so on Reddit, yep, search Tim Arts Kernel. He has this uh, thread for 4.0 instructions, and it's pretty, uh, it's pretty thorough. But there's a few hangups that I ran into. Uh, even though my device is already rooted, I'm going to try to pretend that it's not, so we can go through all the steps together. So. Uh, he has a download link for the kernel, which is required. You also need to download a few more files like this TWRP uh, image, the super user zip. And uh, I don't recommend downloading the factory image from, uh, from Google directly because I get stuck in a, in a boot loop when I, when I try installing the image in this, this method. All right, so also there's two types of nexuses, uh, nexi maybe they're called in plural. There is the Wi-Fi only, then there is the one that has a cellular connection. I have the Wi-Fi only version, so I'm gonna be installing that today. Um, he has instructions on how to go through this process, but before we get to this, he has uh, before you install and unlocking the bootloader steps. So we'll go through these first. I've already organized my files ahead of time and put them in a single directory on my desktop. So I'm not going to show you where to download these because honestly, I don't really remember where to download them from. I just searched um, ADB and Fastboot uh, in some Android forum had a, had a zip file. Okay, so ADB is used to send commands to um, to the tablet when it, it's uh, it's basically an Android debug utility. So I, I'm pretty sure the uh, the Android actually has to be running. The Android OS actually has to be running for it to listen to these commands. And uh, so this would be a while like the device is in normal operation. If you're stuck in a boot loop, you're not going to be able to access this. I'm pretty sure. Maybe you can. Um, I'm not an Android pro though. But there is also what's called a bootloader, which is on the device and it calls the Android OS and starts, starts it running. Um, and the bootloader, uh, the tool we'll use to interface with this bootloader is called Fastboot. It's how you root your device and also how you uh, install some, some kernel files. Okay. And yeah, this is my first time recording anything like this. I know I'm not speaking very clearly on some topics. So if you wanna uh, want some clarification, feel free to leave a comment or visit the website uh, that's listed below. Okay, so yeah. So let's pretend we've downloaded all of these things. Uh, this Nexus head unit folder and let's make this large so people so that you guys can follow along. I don't know how to make it larger. Hello. So in this Nexus head unit folder, I have APK, APKs I want to install. There's a firmware, then which is like the kernel files. Uh, then there's platform tools, which is the ADB and the fastboot. So what we'll do first is go into the bootloader and root it. 
And the way we install the factory image is not going to be in the method that uh, that's discussed on the on the thread, which is downloading the, the image directly from Google. Since I couldn't use this method to get out of a soft boot, so I ended up in, uh, downloading this Nexus root toolkit. And it's uh, there's a guy on some Android forums called Lugfresh or Lug maybe. So this is his tool. Um, so let's open that up. Should be opening. Okay. So there is some log information, whatever else. So let's plug in the device. And as we plug it in, we're going to hold the power button. You can't really see it too well on this camera, but I'm going to hold the power button and, the, and then the volume down buttons at the same time. And it's going to bring us into the bootloader. Okay, so now we're in the bootloader. Uh, you can use the volume keys to scroll through the options. There is start, the restart bootloader, recovery mode, power off. And, um, oops. Let's see if I can adjust this so you can see the text more clearly. All right, I guess that's good enough. Okay, so now I need to add these tools, the ADB and the fast boot tools to my, um, to my path. So I'm going to go to PowerShell and let's make this larger so you guys can follow along. And what we're going to do is edit the environmental variable called path and make sure that this directory called platform tools, which has ADB and fast boot in it, make sure this directory platform tools is on our path. So I'm just going to copy paste what I previously wrote. So it's dollar sign env colon path. So it's saying that we're in uh, modifying the path variable of the, of the environment. Then you want to append. So it's, uh, so you plus equal after this. Then you include the directory name uh, of where platform tools is. But right before this. Uh, this directory, we want to include a, a semicolon so that uh, since we're appending, we don't want to, the, to merge this current path with the previous path. So you have a colon to separate the paths, All right? So I guess before I do this, let's just prove that ADB is not on our path. So uh, ADB devices. All right, it says it doesn't recognize ADB. So let's put this on our path. Now, if we go ADB devices, okay, it says list of devices attached. Okay, since we're in the bootloader, it can't detect our device. It needs the Android OS to detect our device, but at least we know that the ADB stuff is working. So now let's go, okay, let's see if I can make this larger. Now, if we fast boot OEM and lock. Okay, it's telling us the bootloader is already unlocked, but uh, you would run that just to make sure you can modify your system. So the forum says, note, unlocking the bootloader will fully wipe your device. You need to confirm the unlocking procedure on the device screen. As long as you don't lock your bootloader again, you only do this once. All right, so if you unlock your device, you will erase it, heads up. Okay, so now we have our tools installed. We've unlocked our device. Now we can go to the actual uh, directions for the installation. So we've downloaded the files already. And uh, let's start unzipping the kernel files that we need. So in firmware, Timur's kernel, let's extract this. Um, firmware. Yeah, that sounds good. OK. 
Okay, so we extracted this guy. Now there is a few things here. Let me see if I can make this view larger for you guys. There's a few things here. There's readme, kernel drivers. Um, there is this power uh, management device. Then there's these other zip, zip files. So you're going to, if, if you have a Wi-Fi Nexus 7, you want to use this flow variant. If you have a uh, cellular Nexus 7, you want to use this DEP uh, variant. And inside of these, there's like a USB host and some services for the for Timur's custom kernel. So I'm going to extract this flow variant. Uh, let's bring it out one desktop access head unit firmware. Let's find spot. I'm going to copy this uh, PEM and bring it to the outer directory. Okay, so now all of our stuff should be in one location. So we have services, we have USB host, we have the super SU, we have the TWRP and this uh, power uh, power management utility. Okay. So now let's CD desktop, now Nexus head unit. Okay, CD firmware. Okay, so now I am in the correct directory. So the instructions say that you should download the stock image and then use a flash all script. Um, when I use that, I get stuck in a boot loop. So I'm not going to do that. Instead, I'm going to use this Nexus root toolkit. And uh, when you first start this, it's going to access, ask you which type of device you have. I have the Nexus 7 2013 Wi-Fi and which version uh, you are running. I think this is what version you want to run. So I'm going to use MOB30X, apply it. Um, it's telling you how to set up uh, USB debugging on your device. In my case, I'm soft locked or I'm uh, uh, stuck in a boot loop. So I set my device format. Now let's go, go for a full driver. And, uh, sorry, I don't need full driver. I guess if you've never used this tool, doing the full driver installation might be useful for making sure that you have all the right um, utilities you need to talk to your, your tablet. I haven't needed to use that. OK, so now in this middle right section, it's for the restore, upgrade, and downgrade. It's asking for the current status. My device is currently soft bricked, stuck in a boot loop. So I'm going to say flash dock and unroot. So this is going to transfer the image to our tablet. OK, so manually boot device into bootloader mode and tells you how to do that. We, we're currently in the bootloader mode, so we don't need to do that. Click OK if you're ready to continue, so OK. Um, OK, so it's asking for the image. I've already downloaded the image. It's the Razor Flow MOB30X. Um, if you haven't done it before, they have an option for automatically download, but I've already done this, so I have it locally. And I'm going to wipe everything on my device because nothing valuable is on it. All right, so let's hit OK. Then there should be a log file. Yeah, so this log file on the side, I don't know if I can make this larger. I can't. It's telling you what it's doing. So let's read through the instructions as it's moving along. OK, this is saying flashing stock will restore your device to factory state. While it's flashing, please be patient. 
Yeah, okay, if you're writing, continue. So it's going through different partitions than just wiping them. Okay, so as it's going, the uh, forum says, as soon as the tablet screen turns off, you need to quickly press the power and the volume down buttons for about 15 to 20 seconds. This will abort the boot process and instead, tablet will return to the bootloader menu. You need to keep pressing two buttons until you actually see the bootloader menu. Um, and once you do this, then you can install TWRP and the Super SU. And you want to do this before the Android system boots the first time. Uh, this is how you install the custom kernel. So if you let the system boot, uh, then it'll deploy its current image and you won't be able to, it might be more difficult to modify it. Um, so yeah, once this finishes, then it will hold the power button and the volume down button. So I just sent the OS. This is the last part. Now it's writing the OS to the tablet. Okay, it took about 50 seconds. So 75 seconds for that whole section. All right, so once this power is off, once the screen turns off, then I'm going to hold those buttons. Uh, I should do it by itself, I'm pretty sure. Okay, let's hold those buttons. Okay, we're back in the bootloader. Yes, so we don't need the Nexus root toolkit anymore. Goodbye. So what we do need though, is now we need to install the TWRP recovery. So let's type ls to see what's here. And TWRP is a 3.0.2-0 flow image. Okay. So the form tells us to type fast boot. Let me go down so you can actually see. Fast boot flash recovery TWRP dash. I'm gonna tab to complete. Okay, so it sent the, uh, so it overwrote the recovery partition, I think. So now we can use the volume keys to select recovery mode. Then we can press the power button. It's gonna load the TWRP. And once it's here, then I think it's kind of like a uh, drag and drop. Okay, I'm gonna try adjusting this so you can see the text more clearly. I'm using a microscope actually to record the tablet rather than a real camera. So everything is, yeah, the camera is actually like on a different shelf completely. Anyways, so this says, uh, it doesn't matter. So I have two loud modifications. That's what I care about. So let's open the internal storage. And in a separate one, let's open our uh, firmware. So I don't know where the correct place to put this. Uh, I'm just going to drag and drop it to be uh, outside TWRP. 
So it's going to be the PEM update. It's going to be the services, USB host, and super SU. All right, so this is drag and dropped to the Nexus 7 internal storage, not the, not the TWRP uh, folder. So let's go to install uh, select storage. Okay, we're not seeing it. Let's try dropping these into TWRP, see if that helps anything. Click install, let's go to recovery, not there. Let's go to SD card, TWRP. Okay, that folder exists now. Okay, there we are. So I guess, yeah, this process, I'm not very proficient at, but what you do is you open two different Explorer windows, one with all of the files you wanna install, then you drag and drop them in the Nexus 7 internal storage TWRP folder. And once they're here, um, you click this install button on T. Oh, sorry, you cannot see that. Once it's here, you'll click the install button on TWRP. Uh, it might put you in the SD card directory. So you'll click this TWRP directory. Then here's the files that you just installed or that you just uh, uploaded to your device. So the order of operations, you want to do services and USB host before you do super SEO. So let's do that now. Services, add more zips, host. Then you'll swipe to flash it. Now, click the back button. Uh, I don't think there's an order for this PEM update or the SEO. The PEM update overwrites some of the things that were in USB host, I think. But uh, I like to do super SU first before PEM update. This takes a bit of time. Saying that the first reboot might take some, uh, might take a few minutes. That's fine with me. Okay, so now let's do PEM update and flash this. And I think this is the last one. From here, we can restart and boot into Android OS. So there's this button on the right that says reboot system. You can't see it on the screen, but believe me, it says reboot. Okay, so now. Let's look at what it says. So the form says on first boot after installation, do not immediately open Power Event Manager. Um, wait until, until Super SU has some dialogue for Power Event Manager. You want to grant root access. Uh, that way you can think, enable things like uh, fast charging and whatever else. Okay, so this reminds me of the VCAM2 app. Um, I am never able to open the VCAM2 app when it is installed directly like this. Oops. So let's go to firmware. Let's extract the USB host. Yeah, there's a VCAM2. So let's extract this. Okay, copy this VCAM2 APK and I'll include that in the uh, APKs that I'm going to install. So 
once this device is set up, there's a few APKs that will be uh, that will be installed. I like Car Launcher as a general interface for a uh, um, tablet and a vehicle, but there's other launchers that might interest you or be more suitable for your needs. Um, Auto Kit, I have this dongle that lets me connect a Android phone or an iPhone and it allows like CarPlay or Android Auto. So the dongle requires this Auto Kit APK. There is dash command for some OBD2 adapters that you might have, file manager. I think the same version of Android doesn't have a native file manager that's easy to access. So I like to install my own. I have SDR for software defined radio. And then uh, you need the driver as well as the app, the Spotify, then this camera, camera app. So once these are, uh, once the system is booted, then we'll, we'll install these and we'll install them with ADB. Okay, so looking at the Reddit, so VCAM2 will also need super SU permissions, that's fine. Uh, it says you need to disable Android over the era updates. Which some of you, I don't know, I haven't had to do this. Maybe back in the day when they were up updating this device, there were still OTA updates, but I haven't run into that. Yeah, then they just talk about things about like USB hosts and whatever else. Uh, look through this, this, uh, I don't know what Reddit calls these, this channel, Tim Murd's kernel channel. He has some good suggestions and pitfalls and solutions. There is some good advice in the main uh, installation thread. For pitfalls and solutions, it's talking about battery drain, uh, on the go charging, power delivery issues, useful stuff. Then if there's questions that you haven't been able to answer through the forum, there's a lot of, there's a lot of uh, discussions about maybe similar issues that other people have encountered. But one thing to note is this project is no longer maintained. It is, uh, it's more or less frozen the way it is. The creator went on to uh, two other projects and decided that this wasn't really worth his time. I've been trying to fill up the time while this uh, device loads. Oh yeah, so one thing about the APKs, like you might be asking, why do I need to install APKs this way? You actually don't. I don't want to have my Google account associated with this tablet because I know it will be stolen. It's just a matter of time. Maybe it'll be five years. That'd be great. Maybe it'll be next week. So I don't want to have any of my Google Play. Uh, yeah, I don't want to have my, my identity tied to this tablet. So I like to run everything without Google services. Um, like the Play Store or Gmail and stuff like that. So I'll sideload these apps. I've downloaded them from APK Pure. Uh, you're always taking a risk, especially if you're not downloading it directly from the Play Store. So I'm not telling you to do it this way. I'm just showing you how I do it. There are risks if you do it my way. Uh, some of these might have malware that people introduced and then uploaded them online, right? So I'm not too worried about that because the only thing that has my account information is Spotify. And I don't really care if people have my Spotify. I, I'm not a paid user. All right, there we go. So welcome, English United States. Okay. Uh, network. Super user wants to use Power Event Manager, I'll grant it.
I do not want to copy my device information. I do not want to sign in, I'll skip it. I'll skip. I'll go next. Not now. Da, 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 da. I'll improve location accuracy. And I will not help the Android experience. OK. So I think we need to set up developer mode if we want to sideload. So I'm going to do that now. So what you do is you go to your settings, go all the way down to about tablet, then you tap it seven times or something like that. Uh, maybe it's build number, you tap that sometimes. OK, we're now a developer. Go back and there's developer options right here. And USB debugging is on, great. Okay, so one thing I want to do is I want to start VCAM too, just so it breaks and uh, I can install it correctly by side loading. So if we go to Power Event Manager, if we tie, uh, if we uh, launch VCAM2, execute. So this is asking me to allow Google to make security checks and prevent about things about potential harm or decline. Uh, VCAM2 should have launched. Okay, grant permission. Okay, it says, let's try launching again. Okay, so VCAM2 is actually working. I don't need to install it side, on my side loading. Okay, great. So now we'll go to our PowerShell, go back a directory. Okay, now what we do is we go APK install. Let's start with car launcher. Oops, sorry, it's not APK. Uh, it's ADB. And I'm just going to go through the list installing these guys. Um, it's going to take a few minutes. I guess I'll just install car, car launcher first, and then I'll make a separate video about settings that I like to like to have. That way you can always see uh, what the device is going to look like. I guess while it's doing this. Let's put it in like landscape mode. Okay, so car launcher should be here now. So let's just run that and see what it looks like. Car launcher free. Asking for permissions for location, file access, and uh, record audio. Now it's about drawing over other apps. Okay, this is the basic interface. Then the next video, I'll go over uh, modifications. So I guess 
one thing I will say is um, since I am not connected to the Play Store, uh, newer versions of Car Launcher will more or less break uh, if you don't have uh, like a Play Store account. So the one I'm side loading is 3.0.4.10. And I found that this one, it's stable. It doesn't care if you have a place or connection. Um, that way my interface is happy not being part of Google. Okay, just notifications. All right, so that concludes this introductory video about how to get the uh, Nexus set up as a uh, head unit. In the next video, I'll talk about customizations and uh, just software that I like to do. I like to use. All right. Thanks a lot.